In my last video, I talked about how difficult it can be to print fine detail on a 3D print. So I was curious how it would turn out on all my various different printers. It's Filament Friday. Let's print some rockets and find out. And here's the test print. It's a classic rocket on Thingiverse by user Botmaster. Mark Fuller on his YouTube channel used his DaVinci Pro to print the rocket and he had this result. It melted at the top. So using my stock DaVinci 1.0 and the XYZWare software, this is what I got. It melted at the top just like his did. So I decided to use my DaVinci that I've reflashed with Repetier and here's the first result. This is with Cura. I got some melting but it was a little bit better. And then I tried Slicer with a little bit different plastic. It was still ABS but it was a little better. And then I decided to try Simplify 3D on that machine and this was the result. A whole lot better. I got to a point. The next step was to use my Fabricator Mini. Now the Fabricator Mini has an E3D V6 style hot end and I can use whatever slicer I want so I used Simplify 3D. Now the rocket's actually too tall to fit within the Fabricator Mini so I actually cut it in half and then I just printed the top cone, the top half. And here's the results. The top of the cone is almost perfect. I mean there's a little bit of distortion but overall it comes to a point and it pokes your finger it's so sharp. So this came out perfect, or as near perfect as you're going to get. Next, I used the DaVinci Junior. Now this has an E3D V6 style hot end, the same style that's in my Fabricator Mini. Except I can't use anything other than the XYZWare to slice it. And this only prints in PLA, I can't use ABS like I used in all the other prints. But the results show something very interesting. It comes to a point. A little bit of melting, but it comes to a point. A lot better print that I saw on my DaVinci 1.0, even the reflash DaVinci 1.0A, or better than what Mark saw on the DaVinci Pro. So it shows a hot end makes a big difference. Some may question if that's fair, comparing a PLA print to an ABS print, which all the other ones were. So I went back to my Fabricator Mini, printed with PLA, and look at the result just as good as the ABS print. So I really enjoyed that. That was actually kind of fun. Printing on all the different printers with the same print and comparing detail. Now I've done similar things with my chess pieces but not across all the printers and now I've got the DaVinci Junior to compare to so that added a whole new twist. Now of course um, you can print two at one time and I did this a long time ago in one of my early videos where I was printing chess pieces. I found if I did three chess pieces at the same time that gave the plastic time to cool while the head moved between the three chess pieces and I got a lot better results that way. So you can print two of these. I think that's what Mark Fuller did on his and he got better results because it gave it time to, to cool. But what if you got a really big part? You can't fit two on the bed. You know that that can cause a trip cost problems. So a trick there is to just design a really tall pole. Taller or at least as tall as your print. And then just stick that in the corner of your bed so it doesn't take up much space and then it can print the detail and pause while it goes and prints the you know the post. So that's another trick you can you can do. But I don't want to have to do tricks in order to get the thing to to print good and clearly if you have a good hot end and you can use a good slicer you don't have to that's kind of what this tells me so as I look forward to replace I'm going to be replacing at least one of these DaVinci's with a, a better printer and I'm narrowing it, narrowing it down I'm getting real close um, you guys will hear it on Patreon first you're gonna know what's you know what I'm gonna do first as we always do we'll discuss it and I'll get your feedback and stuff but I'm really amazed is how well the uh, DaVinci Junior printed. Now, when I did my reviews on that printer several, many videos ago, um, in fact, I'll put a link up here to the, the playlist, I was really impressed with the print quality, and that's why I bought that thing when I saw it at such a cheap price. But it really comes down to that hot end because it's the same XYZ software. It's the same slicer but the hot end makes a difference. So I really question, why didn't they put that hot end in the DaVinci Pro? 
I mean, why does the cheapest DaVinci printer have the best hot end? <laughs> Go figure. But the other thing I wish they do is just open these up so we could just use a standard G-code. I mean, I'll still buy their plastic, you know, if you want to lock me into the plastic. Although, now that DaVinci Pro took, you know, pay $200 more, and you don't have to do that anymore either. You don't have to use their plastic. So, you know, that was kind of nice. But then why lock us into this software? You know, let us, let's just let us create a G-code and bring it in. And that's another thing I like about the DaVinci Junior is it's got an SD card. I can just put on an SD card, slide it in, and print. I never really have to connect to that thing with a computer. Where in the DaVinci's, and I think the Pro still, you have to connect with USB. Although I think that's got Wi-Fi, so that eliminates some of that. But anyway, that's that was really, really interesting to see those results. Overall, this was this was a lot of fun. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you like what I'm doing here, or you missed that previous video where I talked about this, subscribe. Because I stick videos in. It's not just every film on Friday. I stick other videos in. If you don't subscribe, you might miss them. And if you want to help the channel, Patreon. There's a link up here. Patreon is a great way to help me out. A dollar a month is all I ask. It's $12 a year. And I've got one sub, uh, supporter that I want to recognize. Roy Olmsted. He's been a supporter on Patreon from the early days. And he's one of my biggest contributors. And he's now hit the $50 mark. He's contributed $50 to this channel. So everyone else can you know, watch this for free. And, and I just, I'm, I'm blown away by that. It's just, I thank you so much. And thank you to all my Patreon supporters. But Roy is, you know, he's the first one to hit that level. So he's getting a, a book. Um, I offered him a free book. And he chose the beginners or the getting started with chip kit. So Roy, the book's in the mail. It's on, it's on its way to you. Thank you so much. And if you can't, you know, contribute, I understand. Um, but do me a favor. Share this video on social media. Share it on Facebook. Share it through Twitter. Share it however you can with your friends and family. I'd like to get more subscribers in. Um, it, it really helps because it's not financially. It really doesn't help. It's more of just a number. But... When people see you are growing or they see a lot of subs, uh, YouTube actually promotes a little more and, and other people actually promote you a little more. And so it's, it's kind of a respect number. And I'd like to see it, see it grow further. We've grown a lot from this point last year. Wow. I was under 1,000 at this point last year, and, and now I'm, I'm approaching. I think I've crossed over 4,200. So it, we're growing, but if you just want to help in social media, send this out. I'd appreciate it. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this and I look forward to seeing you next time on Film of Friday.